Shalom, dear brethren and sisters. This is the time to speak a little bit about this situation of coronavirus. What is our position as a Christian, as believers in this time? My topic is found in Psalms 11, 3 where the Bible says about the destruction of a foundation. If the foundations are destroyed, what can we do? In this few months, only four months, the horrible things has happened globally, universally, in the whole world. This tragedy is called coronavirus or COVID-19. We are seeing many things change every day. Our life are changing. Even our churches, our religious service are changing economically, politically, even our families, we see a big shift, a big change in a few months. What's behind this? Why people are going through this turmoil? Psalms 11, Psalms 11, 3, the Bible say, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? We see many foundations now being destroyed. The family, schools, businesses. There is no, in the eyes of people, there is no hope. There is no future. Many things are now destroyed because of this corona virus so this touched my mind when i see the reactions of many governments health public statements when they are talking about this in the media, news, it's really scaring everyone. People are now in fear. I see this also as another type of corona. This coronavirus is, be, is giving birth to corona fear. As a preacher, I see another also corona coming in the fear. Is the corona sin, S-I-N. When we are going through fear, we are not in the perfect love of God. And this gives birth to sin. We can go, we can find ourselves in sin without knowing that. Because the fear always leads us in sin. Remember fear led Abraham to deny his wife because of fear. Because of fear, we can make a decision. And those decisions can lead us into the sin. So by seeing this coronavirus, how it is destroying everything, is destroying our families, our, uh, our churches, our uh, countries, our nations, our social structure. You see, it's very hard to believe that the whole world is going through this situation. 
sometimes, long ago, we had this kind, kind of things in one region. Maybe it's Ebola in Africa, or it's war in Syria. Maybe it's uh, economic problems in the U.S. You see, in the, the particular region. But today, we are assisting the, the, the calamity. It, it, this is global, global situation, a global tragedy. Global tragedy. Not because coronavirus is the only disease that can kill, because we have many diseases that are killing people. Even though we have a cure for those diseases. But the problem of coronavirus, people don't know how to deal with it today. Scientists, doctors, pharmacists, sci if, 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 people who are trying to see if they can find solution, they are not sure if what they are trying to do can help, can really help. So this is becoming a tragedy because it brings fear for many, many, many people. So the measures that are given by our authorities also are putting us in fear. They want to defend us, to protect us. And this, they have a right to protect us. So those measures of protection are also scaring us. For example, to confine people in one home, in one place, not going outside. It's like a prison, a jail. So people are finding themselves in the situation when they, where they cannot move around. So this it, it, it's bringing, it, it brings fear, fear. People are very scared for this situation. So the Bible is saying, if the foundations are destroyed, what can a righteous do? What can we do in this situation as believers, as the sons and the daughters of the Most High? Are we going to allow the fear to overtake our heart? Are we going to believe what the news the media are telling us? What can we do if the foundation really are destroyed? Are we going to allow our faith also to be destroyed because of the information we have about coronavirus? Are we going to allow our emotion, our mind, to be overtaken by fear in this time? I know that fear is a common emotion, is a common painful emotion. But what does the Bible say about this situation, about the fear? Coronavirus, as I said, we lead to corona fear. The corona fear will lead to corona sin. And you see, when we are living in a sin, we are living in the dead condition. We are dead. The wages of sin is death. According to Bible. I know we must have all the measures of prevention to avoid this virus. There is certain measures given by the authorities how we might you see protect ourselves but spiritually what really the bible does say about this let us quickly see a few points 
which will help us as a Christian, as a believers, even those who are not believers, they can follow these steps and avoid the fear in their life. Remember, nothing is new. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. He said this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus said that, I have told you these things so that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace. Don't allow anything to rob your peace, to steal your peace. No. Have your peace in Jesus. And the, Jesus said that in this world, you will have trouble. Jesus didn't promise peace every time. We have time of peace. We have time of trouble. We will have time of pain. And we have time of relief. We have time of cry and a time of joy. We must go through all situations. We must accept both situations. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Even if you can have joy, but remind yourself that one time we have trouble. So if you have trouble, is it time to panic? Is it time to cry? Is it time to lose hope? Is it time to lose our faith? Is it the time to lose our love? Is this time to lose our faith? I think no. If the foundation are collapsing, are destroyed, what can a believer, a righteous person do, can do in this time? Number one, trust God and Jesus. Trust God and Jesus. Trust not the news, the rumors, Trust or not, what you are reading on the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook, there are many fake news. You need to follow reliable sources. Not every news you have on the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook is correct. Even if reliable sources are speaking true about coronavirus, but we as children of God, we need to trust God. We need to trust Jesus amid this situation. John 14, 1. John 14, 1. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and believe also in me. This Jesus say, Jesus saying that let not your heart be troubled. Don't allow your heart to be troubled. Don't allow your mind to be troubled. However, believe in God, believe in Jesus. Trust in God, trust in Jesus. This is a time to trust God more than the other time you have been. This is the time to trust God. Increase your trust. Never decrease your trust, but increase. This is a time to increase your trust in God. Trust Him because He can save you. Trust Him because He can protect you. Trust Him because He can 
rescue. Trust him because he can heal you. Trust, he, trust him because he can change situations. So, what a righteousness can do in this time, number one, is to trust God and trust Jesus. Psalms 9 10, the Bible said, And those who know your name put their trust in you. This Psalm, Psalm 9 10. Those who know your name put their trust in you. I think you know the name of God. I know you have been with God. You walked with him since you were young. This is time to put your trust in him. Those who know his name must put their trust in God. He will not forsake you. Believe me. He will be with you. He will protect you. He will be with you. Trust in him. Number two. Meditate the word of God. Meditate the word of God. Read and read, think and think, remind yourself about the word of God. In Joshua 1 9, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then it will make your way prosperous, and then it will have a good success. Verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is a time to lean upon the promise of God. Read the Bible, find the verses of promises where God is telling you that he will be with you. He will protect you. He will not forsake you. He has commanded you. Be strong. And be of good courage. Never, never, never be afraid. Fear not. Fear not, my sister. Fear not, my brother. This is the time God wants to do something in our life. Yes, coronavirus is there. Is there. But our God also is there. And our God is powerful than coronavirus. And we have been through many things, even than coronavirus. But by his help today, we are alive, we're still alive. Also, stay connected with God, with his word, meditate his word. According to Psalms 1, 1, 3, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, up to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. What kind of counsel are you listening to? nor stand in the path of the sinners. Which way are you taking? What company of people are you going with in this time? Nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. You must delight, delight in the law of the Lord. You must be pleasant in the law of the Lord. And his law, he meditates day and night. Please meditate the word of God in this time of trouble. Read and read and read and read again. Meditate, meditate, meditate the word of God. You will be comforted. Through this word, you will have a revelation. God will reveal you his word upon your life. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. 
you will become like tree by the river. By the river. You will have a leaf. You will not wither. You will become fresh. You will prosper. Whatever you do, God will put his hand in it, then it will prosper. Because you don't believe what people are saying, but you believe what God is saying. Please, try to listen to his voice, not to many voices. Around us now, we have many voices, but please, listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. Don't listen many voices, but listen to the voice of God. Amen. Number three, what can righteousness do? Pray for the restoration. Pray for the restoration. Don't just still stand still. Just become depressed, distressed, no. Pray. Pray for what? For restoration, for healing. A righteous person, when the foundation are collapsing, they pray for restoration. Are you praying for what? Pray for restoration of the sick people, restoration of the fearful people, even pray for the consolation of our brethren and sisters who lost their beloved one. Pray so God can console, can comfort their hearts. They need hope in time like this. Don't just focus on negative word but focus on the prayer pray for restoration god wants you to become a watchman of this nation a watchman of your city a watchman of your family watchman of your church watchman of restoration you need to become you must become the watchman of restoration be at your guard. Become a real watchman. The Bible say Isaiah 62, 62, 6, 7. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. And give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. We need to pray until solution comes. We need to pray until healing comes. We need to pray until this coronavirus disappears. We need to pray until people get restoration. We need to pray until our economy come back. We need to pray until our society unified again. This is our time to pray. A righteous person pray, prays in this time. Don't just become a redundant person, just looking around. No, it's time to pray. It's time to listen from God. It's time to connect with the Holy Ghost. What the Holy Ghost is speaking in this time. It's our time to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God wants you to become a watchman. He wants you to become a repairer of the breach. A repairer of the wall. A repairer. God wants you to become a repairer of the wall, a repairer of the breach. 
This is your time. Isaiah 58, 12. Isaiah 58, 12. The Bible says, Those among you shall build the old the western places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and shall be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. We will become the repair of the gaps, of the breaches. We will restore the street where people must walk in it again. It's you and me. As righteous people, as saints people, as believers, we need to pray because we are the repairer of the bridge. Number four, and the last one, we need to thank God in all things. You as son and the daughters of God, you need to thank him in God in all things. Don't blame God. Don't blame people. Don't blame uh, scientists. Just uh, thank God. By thanking God, we have a good results. First, Thessalonians 5.18. The Bible said, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Thank God in everything. This is God's will. God's want, God wants us to do something. To give him thanks. He is God. He is God. Even when the flood was on the earth, God was still God. If in the darkest moment in this world, God is still on the throne. He is God. Even if things are going bad, God is still, he is on his throne. We cannot do anything except to thank him. Thank God in all circumstances. Thank him on all situations. Thank him in all challenges you are going through. Because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When you thank him, you are pleasing God. Because this is his will. Dear brothers and dear sisters, remember these four things. What you can do as a righteous person in this situation. When foundations are collapsing. Number one, you need to trust God, trust Jesus, trust the Holy Spirit. Number two, you need to meditate the word of God. Found the promise of God. Then live in those promises. Number three, pray for the restoration. Pray for the healing. Become a watchman. Become a repairer of the bridge. Number four, thank God in all things. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. Allow me to pray with you. Allow me just to rebuke the spirit of fear in you. Then you will start to walk in victorious life. From now, let the spirit of fear be scattered, be destroyed in your life. Let me pray with you. In the name of Jesus, our heavenly fathers, we come before you, Lord. I bring my sister. I bring my brother. I came against the spirit of fear. I came against the spirit of sin. I came against the spirit of coronavirus in the name of Jesus, in his, her life, in his, her family, in his, her job, in the name of Jesus. You spirit of for coronavirus, go in the name of Jesus. You spirit of fear, go in the name of Jesus. You spirit of sin, in the name of Jesus, go. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come to bring confidence. Let your people repent, come back to you, humble themselves, seek your ways. I know, Lord, you will heal our land. You will heal our nation. You will bring healing. You will touch many people. You will bring restoration. If my people 
by whom are called, who called my name, shall humble themselves, shall seek my faith, repent their sins, turn from their evil ways. I will hear them from heaven. This is your promise, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to touch our people so they can become humble in this situation. They can find, they can seek you. They can pray until you bring restoration. I rebuke every evil spirit, every spirit of fear, every spirit of disease, every spirit of hopeless status in the name of Jesus. You spirit of confusion, spirit of fear, I rebuke you because God did not give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, strength, and the spirit of self-confidence in Jesus. Lord, bring this power. Bring this healing in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Ghost continue to work in your heart until we become free. I pray for you to have a good sleep, for you to have peace of mind, to have even good dream, to have also the future for your life. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen, amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you.